Hi, Phil here from Phil's Random Stuff channel. Now this is a continuation on my exploration of Voltex batteries. Now, um, if you've watched my channel before, I did one uh, beginning of this year on their basic 100 amp hour battery. Um, they had a Premium Plus RV battery um, also available then, but by the time I went around to order one and everything else that went wrong in my life at that time, they had changed models. So. I've done a, a brief video on a teardown on the 100 amp hour plus battery is what they call it and I went ahead and also ordered the um, basic battery. Now the case is identical except for they actually now giving their batteries a name so Iron Wolf for the plus and Skyhawk for the basic battery. Um, now the specs change between them and bits and pieces so we'll go through and explore all that. Um, Interestingly enough, there's about $180 difference between these two batteries. This uh, retails for $649 on the Voltex site, and this one here for $469. Now, I am guess this video is sort of going to be a comparison between the two, should you spend the extra dollars and get, hopefully, maybe a better battery, or is it just worthwhile buying this and just saving yourself that $180 Australian. Um, so we'll go ahead, we'll tear it down, I'll cut them open, um, and we'll have a look at the internals, see if they're changed between, you know, the basics have changed and the differences between the two. Um, interesting enough, they both come with the same user manual, S-series user manual. Now, um, when you ex compare between the site and what this says, nothing really lines up except for the measurements. And other than that, you may as well just throw that away because that's of no use. Um, now going into the comparison between these two batteries, obviously they're the same case size. There's just a normal N70Z size. So those, let's, we'll get a bit nerdy. I've actually taken some notes. So let's do, go through some stuff. Um, now they're both, they're both 100 amp hour. Um, as I said, there's $180 difference between the basic and the plus. Uh, the case size is 360 mil long, 169 mil wide, and um, the 215 high. Now, weight is an interesting thing. Um, the, if you read the specs on the Voltex site, it says that this is 9.8 kilos for the plus battery. Um, it actually weighs in at 12.13 kilo, kilos, so way off. It's actually heavier than the basic. Um, and so the basic weighs in, it says on its website now, it weighs in at 14 kilos. Um, and now when you go and weigh it, it weighs in 11.17, the same as the old basic, probably a slightly little bit heavier, but, um, you know, a little bit lighter, I should say, than the old basic that I did a review on. It was 11.5 kilos. So there is a little bit in that. Now, if you pick these batteries up and shake them around, this one's got something sliding around inside of it. This one feels nice and secure. Um, we'll keep going with the specs now. Um, now, discharge rate. Uh, now, this basic varies from the old one uh, where it had a, a 50 amp continuous and a 100 amp max for, i say, um, for five seconds. Now, they actually have a 100 amp continuous discharge on this and a um, 50 amp uh, standard discharge whatever that means, and 300 amps for five seconds versus this one here where it just says 100 amp continuous. That's it. No other specs on that. Um, it does have, I looked up the specs on the, on the BMS, and it does have a discharge, a uh, uh, short circuit protection of 360 amps. So um, I guess you could run up to that. Um, now, cycle life is another interesting thing. Both the, this one here is 2,000 cycles, 2,000 cycle lives, um, cycle hours, or oh, cycles, I'll get it right. Um, and it doesn't really state what depth of charge, but we could probably assume 80%, I guess, like most things. Um, that's the same as the old basic I did a review on. And the new one now um, for the plus is 2,800 cycles to 80% depth of charge. So they actually give you a, a, a pretty decent rating for that, so it's uh, you know you're getting another 800 cycles out of this battery. Um, series parallel connection, it still says no for this, but 
I know you can do it because I've, I've paralleled mine up. I don't know about series because the voltage rating of the BMS, no idea on that. Um, and obviously this one, that's a big plus for this one. You can put six in parallel and six in series. So that's giving you 600 amp hours at 70, you know, 77, 75 odd volts, whatever you want to do the math on that. Um, 76.8 volts, whatever you want to do, if you're going to call it a 12.8 volt battery, um, if I've got that right. Um, now, they are both are using prismatic cells. I've, I'm, I'm assuming that's what the specs say. Um, now, the other interesting thing is cutoff voltage. Basics are 10 volts, um, and it says on the spec sheet on the website, 11.5 volts, or 11.2 volts, I'll get that right. Um, now... But it also, but it says 10 volt on the back of it, and the information sheet is not really connect correct neither. So, you know, we'll find out when we do our load test on that. Um, the spec for the BMS actually um, states about 10.2 volts, I believe. So we'll see what that's what that's going to um, work out. As I said, when we do the the load test, so. Um, actually, no, I looked up the spec there, it says 10 volts. So let's run with that. We'll see what where we end up. Um, now, it's also saying that the charging voltage is 14.6 uh, um, for the old basic I did a review for, and now it's giving voltage charge rates of 14.2 to 14.6 for both these batteries. Now, the amp each charger you can run on these things um, is... 50 amps max with a recommended of 20 amps for the basic and um, 100 amps max. It's all it says for this one here. So if you can charge it at 100 amps, that's, you know, not too bad, eh? Thumbs up. Um, operation, operating temp, uh, 0 to 45 degrees C um, for charging and minus 20 to minus 50 for the basics. Um, and for the plus, it's 0 to 50 degrees C charging and then um, a discharge of 20, negative 25 to positive 65. So it's got a bit wider operating temperature for that fella. And the storage temperature is interesting, uh, minus 10 to 50 um, degrees C for the basic. And this one actually doesn't have a spec on the plus for the um, storage temperature on it. So go figure, but the BMS specs are minus 20 to 70 degrees C operating temperature for the BMS in it. So I guess that's good enough to go by. Uh, temperature protection is another uh, another important thing. Um, now, not, neither of these have um, under temperature or low temperature protection built into them. Not really something that's that necessary in Australia. So, you know, give or take what it is. But um, if you use a, a decent lithium charger, most of those will have a a temp probe for your battery and they should disconnect at low temperature and not charge. Um, but you know, that's up to you. Um, so this one actually does, this one actually has high voltage disconnect. So that's on discharge and charge. Um, but for the BMS, that's what it says, but it says on discharge only. So go figure on that on the, on the spec sheet on the website. Um, now the discharge disconnect temperature is 85 degrees C and the reconnect is 60 degrees C for the plus. Uh, warranty, still three year warranty for the basic and five year warranty for the plus. And um, actually they give the plus an IP rating of 65 and these none. Now I can tell you from cutting the battery case open, these are actually sealed quite well. They're um, glued down all the way around the perimeter and there's definitely sort of no way any moisture can get into there. Now they've added a, you know, the, the U-Butte useless voltmeter that they like to put on these things, um, but it's not sealed whatsoever around the top of the battery. So if you've got water sitting on that, it's gonna run inside and never get out, um, which is, you know, a bit of a, bit of a loss, but oh well. So if you wanna stick something in water, I'd go with the basic. If you're gonna put it in a tinny or something like that, Although the voltmeter is kind of handy, um, it tells you the percentage there and the voltage, which is good. I guess if you ran a bit of silicon around it, um, you know, it might be all right, but you know, you're gonna get water into this thing here and it's not gonna be sealed. The other thing is they've supplied it with longer bolts now, which is a bonus. 
Um, these are about uh, about 16 mil long or so, but if you put them on with put them in the battery without the washers, they'll actually bottom out in the bottom of the stud or the post hole um, before they'll get tight. So it's just something to take note of if you're using um, if you tend to if you lose the washers or whatnot on it. You've got to have the spring washer and the washer for it to go down tight. So if you've got really thin lugs or whatever you're doing, just be mindful that you you know test how tight your lugs are. Right, I guess we better get to the the cutting in or oh, cutting open part of these two batteries to see what they're like. Now I found a good way or a lot better way now to cut these open and that's to use a, a paint scraper with the edge sharpened and cut it open. Rather than using a hacksaw or, or a renovator tool, um, it just makes gluing them back together really easily. Easier, I should say, because you don't lose any height out of the battery. When you use a hacksaw, you lose the thickness of the height um, of the hacksaw, thickness of the blade of the hacksaw and height, which makes clamping these things back down really hard um, because of the metal uh, frame that supports the cells inside of it. So, back in a bit after we've ripped these things open, eh?